So we all know minds think and we know that thoughts can really get us in a muddle. Thoughts can really take us over and thoughts themselves have a dynamism and create sensations within the body and the sensations and the thoughts together can create an emotional or a heart space sense of feeling or feeling tone, all these different words for the moods that we get in. And there's some, you know, excellent exploration we can do to understand the way thoughts and minds drive the emotions, drive the behavioural actions we then get involved in and drive the body sensations or whether it's going in the other direction with body sensations arising first and triggering emotions and thoughts or, you know, what, where the circle starts, sort of a real chicken and egg situation. But we know that thoughts can just completely take our lives over and that we start to really believe what we think. And it can be really helpful to pause for a moment and, and just consider that, that thoughts tell us they are the truth in the moment. But if we step back and look at the arc of a day or maybe better still the arc of a week, we can begin to notice this propensity we have to see an event or a person or a situation one way and then with other information we see it another way. Or if there's a different emotional landscape here, we see it a different way. And we're sort of changing our mind. You know, one moment, oh, I, I was thinking this, but, but then I had another thought, or on the other hand, or actually. So if we look closely at thoughts, it, it's really helpful to notice that if we just take the snapshot of one thought in this minute, it really can feel like the truth, a fact. This is what I think this is what I stand for, this is what I believe. And yet over a larger period of time, we start to see that these thoughts are changing and therefore not necessarily a fact, not necessarily exactly what I think or who I am. And so what mindfulness is offering is this capacity to pay attention to our thoughts the capacity to pay attention to lots of different aspects of ourself and our life, but particularly to our minds, to our thoughts. So what is attention? Well, the first thing to notice is that it's kind of coming from within the brain or within the mind, and therefore it is a sort of thought process. But you only have to spend a little bit of time using your attention to begin to experience for yourself and therefore understand that attention has a different kind of quality to it, a different feeling to it. Attention has many different names and maybe you've heard some of these. So sometimes it's called presence or being present. Other times it's called awareness, being aware, noticing. I, I use that term loads for myself and when I'm teaching, what are you noticing? paying attention. So we're kind of like, you know, there's a sort of monetary um, overtone to that one where you're paying attention to this. And um, what about Eckhart Tolle and the power of now and the use of this term now, living in the now, being in the now and an understanding that there's only now. So attention is something to do with now. And what is the reason for developing this capacity to pay attention? Well, when we become aware, when we're using our attention, for a start, we're kind of changing what's going through our minds and that can bring a degree of relief. It can bring a degree of support to ourselves, offering a space where we can kind of help ourselves if this is what our mind is putting us through right now or if this is what life is putting us through right now. And it can be a real resource. So what I mean by that is using the attention is something that can resource us, give us a source of strength, a source of power, a source of stability, a sort of sense of, of being in some way in control. And we might come back and revisit the term in control, um, but a sense of agency. But it's more than that. When we begin to use our power of attention, we begin to learn something about our habits. 
So when we pay attention to our thoughts or pay attention to the way thoughts trigger body sensations and emotions, we begin to learn the patterns that we live with from within ourselves. This happens and my habitual pattern is that. Maybe I could talk a few moments more on that. If somebody upsets me, is my usual pattern to fight and be defensive, kind of go towards them, take the fight to them? Or is the usual pattern to retreat, to move away, to flight, to use the, the jargon, fight and flight? Or the th third one in that series, to freeze, to kind of be really unsure what to do. So when we're in fight, flight or freeze, we tend to really be in them and not aware of them. But if we pay attention to what we're doing, we start to notice, oh, that's really interesting. I have a pattern here. And once we start to notice our patterns, then we start to access the possibility of different choices. You know, some of our patterns are really helpful. You know, we have patterns because it makes life so much quicker and easier to get things done. But sometimes our patterns are really unhelpful. And speaking for myself, I really know that to be true. And to be able to pay attention and notice what I'm doing means I can make a different choice. And that different choice when enacted in the world, especially in relationship with other people, can yield different results. And so by using our attention, we're beginning to take some control, using that word again, of the actions in our lives, the way we're shaping our lives. We're beginning to use attention to make choices around our reactivity or to become more responsive, whether to be in this um, really paying attention to the difficulty or whether we can use our attention to, yes, there's a difficulty here, but begin to notice some of the lovely things in our lives or some of the neutral things which are untriggering and more stable for us. So attention is really a fantastic tool to learn to kind of connect to. It's almost, you can think of it almost like a muscle, the muscle of attention, because just like the muscles in our arms, when we lift weights, they get bigger and more toned, stronger. The muscle of attention, the more we use it, the more useful is it, it is, the more useful it is, the stronger it can get to make choices in our lives that can really help us. And this is an ongoing process. So we don't need to become fully aware and full of attention. It, it just doesn't work like that. You know, going back to the starting point of this talk, thoughts can be so strong that it can be that for quite a long period of time, it can be that we're noticing thoughts and then stepping out to notice, it can be that we're lost in thoughts and then stepping out to notice the thought and then we're lost in thoughts again and then stepping out, attention on the thoughts and then lost in thoughts again. But the more we do this, the more useful attention becomes to us, the more we get used to using attention and we gradually start to be able to use it in our lives. So, I hope some of that's useful for you. If you want to ask any questions about this, please feel free to come to the to the Zoom question and answer or to, to drop a question into the blog post. Thank you.